Hello, my name is Mark from JazzGuitarLessons.net and welcome to this video lesson, a short vlog actually on uh, adding chromaticism for your jazz guitar improvisation. Uh, it's a topic that's been treated on the blog by m yours truly and plenty of other resources online. However, I want to make this, can I say popuri, popuri without being uh, judged? So it's like a, a, I assembled these resources so that you can take maximum advantage of what the chromatic scale is, how you can fit in between your lines, etc. So let's get going right away. Number one tip is that you're going to find this very simple and of course there's a blog post associated with this and in the description you can find the blog post and all the links to all the stuff I'm talking about on the blog and my website or other websites. Uh, your first step in learning the chromatic scale is not just to do, people say, oh I know the spider, you know this four four fingers type of thing and this not it it's actually not it what you should be learning is uh, say start with root c here and aim to go at root c here and fill all the chromatic notes so one way to do this would be go which is not very practical fret by fret so if you learn it four fingers at a time you're gonna sound like this You can see this on the blog, I've created a page just for this, just for learning the chromatic scale. And then after you do one, two, three, four, one, this new note is your first note of descending. So one, two, three, four, one. Be mindful of the gap between the third and second string. Same here. So people can go one, two, three, four, 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 one. All right. So that's your first order of business. If you've never done this, just stop the video here, shed this until your fingers bleed. Uh, actually, don't, please. But uh, do do learn this until it becomes second nature. Now, my second strategy for learning chromatic scales is to use actually more than four notes per string, and that comes out. Uh, it comes as a revelation for a lot of my students. So you will start with G and we will go all the way up to G here. Uh, sorry, G, right. I might have trouble with this guy. Uh, actually, my, my two other guitars suffered a very bad Canadian winter and a bad spring and they buzz all. My blue one and my, my semi-hollow, they're right there, but I can't play them. So this one is still playable, so <laughs> so forgive me. I, I know you can't see the points, uh, but you you know, starting with G. So G, you will be playing two notes with your index and two notes with your pinky, meaning you have four fingers. This guy plays two and this guy plays two. So it winds up being six notes on each string. And it's a really interesting way to navigate the fretboard. Bear with me. We start with G, one, one, two, three, four, four. So we've covered G all the way to C. And your next note is of course C sharp. And you repeat this on the next string, so. And now you're back to G. If you do this three times in a row, you're gonna get one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, five, six, one. And you do the same descending. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Uh, be mindful of that, you know, that last one. It means that actually your top and bottom string, you you play seven notes on each show. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a slide. You can find the full tabs of this on the blog on the chromatic scale page because I guess I've built this about maybe 10 years ago when a lot of students were asking questions about this. So if you're watching this and you're going, hmm, there are ways you can, I love doing this, just a yawn you can reframe and have new ways of thinking about that chromatic scale. And I'm th when I'm saying thinking, I mean rhythmic. So rhythmically modifying how you perceive where the downbeat is. Because of course, if you do your, if you're a rocker, and you do your six note per string like this, you're gonna sound like this. You know, we're gonna hear one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, that was loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, but what if you can gain control over how that sequence of note is heard through the bar? So that, that's really the secret. So number one, we're going to talk about forward motion FM, which was famous piano uh, educator, a jazz player, Galper, 
Galper, Galper. Anyways, this guy wrote a forward motion book, and what I would start to do, uh, what what I do teach students is say we go back to that four note per string. What we will do is start to think of a pickup. So going the first note we're starting on is on beat one, but what we'll perceive is perceive a little pickup of three notes. So as simple as this. Right. So go a one, two, three, a one, two, three, four, one. So I don't know if you hear it the same way, but that that's the process you hear. Right. And you're playing the same thing, but you're playing badu, but da da the target da da the target da da the go so you you have this goal you can reach towards and you sort of i guess play it a little bit louder like see how it sounds different now than instead of taka 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 like the rock you know the john petrucci uh, dream theater thing or the steve Vai thing taka that play 16th notes really fast like well what if you had had this pickup note before, so this is how jazz players phrase. So imagine if you were to practice this FM over the four note per string and the six note per string. So and that's often a turning point for my students. It was certainly for me that I'm actually playing the exact same notes. But since my mind is going, oh, okay, that's like bar line, that's first beat, and then there's a pickup, all of a sudden, it just starts to sound completely different. All right, so that's a really, really good step you can take. And now uh, we're up to number four. So just to recap, number one, chromatic, four note per string. Number two, chromatic, six note per string. Number three, FM, forward motion. Number four, my tip here is to use different accents. So if you, let's take the, uh, chromatic scale four notes here and just go hmm what if the accents were every three notes so go one two three one two three one two three this demands control so you the accent sounds not when you change string but when you decide to make this accent sound so i'm gonna not spend a lot of time on this but i'm gonna challenge the, the most advanced players that are watching uh, go ahead and do a five note version so When you come to the end of the string and you change direction, you might not be a, at your fifth accent or first accent. So it, it's really challenging to go, hey, I'm playing the same notes. I'm just deciding to put an accent every five notes. Uh, same with the six per string. Check this out. At the, at the top, I think I failed. I, I did a four, right, or a six. I, I'll rewatch it. I'll catch myself. But the point here is, I'm not trying to show off. I'm not necessarily great at these things. But if you want to reframe and think about technique, uh, but not just in the sense of memorizing modes and scale everywhere and playing really fast, but in terms of actual phrasing technique to give you that sort of freedom when you come to improvise, that you're like, well. I can float around here, I can play in that beat, I cannot play here and I have a control over my phrasing. Then you're talking about real technical expression on, on your instrument. And you're telling the instrument, you know, do what I say, do what I hear and not what you're bound to with your, your physical limitations. So that's number four. Uh, really enlightening and uh, good luck with that one because it, it's really interesting to take four notes per string, six notes per string and then go accent every five. Blue. It's really strange. I have three more tips to let you go, and those are, are more in the exploration department. So uh, number five, the, the tip number five, sorry, five. Okay, uh, number five is bebop scales. So I've treated bebop scales 
from several angles on the blog. I'm going to try to put as many links in the description here. But bebop scales are great because they, they allow you to just keep going. So at the very basic, you get, you know, that's a C7, C dominant 7. Also, I'm a big fan of getting uh, bebop scales across, so even minor bebop scales, major bebop scales, and bebop modes. Even I'm gonna put bebop modes as a good video to watch. I'm gonna put in the description here. And the point is, it's chromaticism because you're always dealing with one, at least one extra note within your scale. So, you know, you can really keep going on your fretboard. And that's not pure chromaticism, but it's an entry point into adding more notes around uh, your, your basic scales. That's for tip number five. Tip number six is actually an exercise I had done and there's a three way to add chromaticism that is found on the blog. Was, there was a true fire contest back in 2014. I'm gonna share uh, one of the exercises that's it really, it's left a mark on my playing and on a lot of students. Check this out. It's called the root to root. So we're gonna take C and C and just run every chromatic note in between by always touching back on the root. So go. All right. And then, but you repeat this for every single tone in the chromatic scale. So you have 12 to go. So slowly ascending in half step. So what we've done is effectively play C and C again, but play the chromatic scale in between. So you have this relationship, you always keep going back to C, and then do the same backwards, so go. There's different variations on this, of course, but it's a really good root to root. So that's my sixth tip. You can do this from any root to any root in, in any fingering that you like, but the point is you're still practicing the chromatic scale. Um, and the last tip I'm gonna leave you with is the Charlie Banacos. Uh, I'm gonna ruin his name, Banacos. I guess he was a famous, or is a famous piano teacher or sax teacher, I forgot, but I, I, I read his exercises and never looked back. It's 12 different ways you can approach a chromatic tone. And the point here, I think, was he a Chicago or a New York guy? I keep forgetting, but this, the, just the 12 things are great. So let's talk about the root C. So Charlie Banacos would say, well, there's 12 ways you can go in there. You can go, or you can go, or you can go, or you can go. That's two note approach. And you can go, or, or you can go, or you can go. You know, all these, these different ways. And in my scientific mind, I did the same thing as the forward motion with that guy. I went, well, what if uh, we place that target note on beat one, and that target note is the third of an A flat major. Say so it's a C note, right? And what if we go a one, two, three. So there's more than, there's 12 ways to play the notes to approach one note but there's more than 12 ways to, to place this guy in time. And one of my favorite ways is to say, what if we place this guy on beat one? What if we place this guy on beat two or beat three? So it has, has you creating lines uh, that are purely chromatic to target notes that are important. I targeted the third, you can target the tonic, the fifth or the seventh or the ninth of a chord actually. So it gives you an even broader scheme of adding chromaticism. I'm not gonna dwell too much on this one because actually, Shameless plug, I have uh, created a course about a year or so ago called, or it's more than a year, maybe two years ago, Improv and Chromaticism. I'm gonna make sure the link is right here. And it's it's a self-study cor video course that covers all these topics, forward motion, chromatic scale, um, the Charlie Banacos, the, the 12 approaches, and it covers how to apply this on standards, etc. So it's a good 
intermediate level course if you can already improvise but you're sort of bored because you improvise too much inside so this is the reason why i created the course once again um improv and chromaticism it's found on jazzguitarlessons.net one google search your way or in the description or a link here uh now i'm going to leave you with that thought so this whole video you can take any of the tips i talked about take it and run run away with it for a year or more okay so my goal as an instructor here is just to give you stuff to make you be freer in the moments that you are improvising that you wish to not always sound in the scale in the arpeggio in this and also give you tools so that you hear your lines better actually which notes you're you're hearing but also where they are in the time so my own quest for learning to play chromatically was mainly driven by that quest to not what notes but where those notes happened uh, can i start on the end of three can i start on the end of two can i land on the two of the next bar with a certain chromatic line and by dissecting all these things you you look at them with a microscope you're like right in there and then you go to a jam session you're like oh look at that hmm, that's cool so that's that's sort of my process on that note uh, i know i make way too long videos for for blog posts like this or short videos so refer to the blog post on the website next time we're going to talk about uh, the garzon george garzon triadic chromatic concept which is my it's my tip number eight actually for chromaticism but it could not fit in this video because it's a pretty pretty involved concept all right so once again you can read more blog and stuff at jazzguitarlessons.net slash blog for free lessons uh, you can find me on jazzguitarlessons.net improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel to get all the latest updates and I'm always happy to have your feedback. You can reach out to me. You can ask questions in the comments here. And please share this video with your friends or anyone you think might like it. All right, I'll see you next time. Take care.